Hey guys, that's right, D here is back with a brand new episode of Table Cheese with Anton Six and myself. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and follow, and guess what? Enjoy the show. Hey, hey, how's it going? Brand new episode, and hey, here's the cool part. I'm not by myself this time, because this is Table Cheese. I'm D, one of your hosts of Table Cheese, and I got the coolest of the cool, the man with the backwards cap, Anton Six of Cheesy Controller Podcast. How's it going, Anton? It's going great, D. You know, a lot of gaming news since the last time we recorded. We got a lot of releases on the horizon, and we got some big stories to talk about. Oh, yeah. A lot of, a lot of big stories, and there was a lot of news. For like, like the second week of January, yeah. A lot of stuff to talk about. Now, like, there's a lot of stuff to, like, to be said, like uh, some exclusives. With uh, Xbox, you got uh, The Last of Us casting casting uh, a new, two new cast members, I believe, for the second season. I think uh, I've seen all... six total. Like, they six were going total? Is what you kind of rapid fire. Yeah, we got a no. lot of the major players from the second game. We got casting for them, so. Yep. Offerman got a Golden Globe for his role in The Last of Us. Good on him. Well deserved. Uh, well deserved. Yeah, I cried that episode. I, I bawled my eyes out. Uh, Nintendo, we got some news about Nintendo and PlayStation, and Sega is rebooting some games. So, you know, we're going to get into it. Well, I, I, I was trying to think about, like, where to start off first, but you know what? Like, we have not done an episode in probably, like, what, like a week? Maybe a week and a half? How have you been? What's been going on with you? Uh, you know, nothing much. Uh, as far as gaming, uh... We actually, there's been this huge movement on like Monster Hunter Twitter of going back to Monster Hunter World, and it's had like its highest concurrent player counts of all time on PC. And so we hopped in on PlayStation, and I was actually surprised at how busy the lobbies were because in Monster Hunter World you had 16 player lobbies, right? And so the lobbies had like eight, ten people in them, so that's actually surprising for a game where typically if you're playing, you're playing off on a server by yourself, but there were actually <laughs> people in like the public servers just online playing on PlayStation, so I'm I'm looking I'm looking it up on Twitter as we speak just to see what it's looking like out there. Because like it's always fun when when there's something that's been out for like maybe two or three years and people like, you know, it gets like a certain motion with what you're doing with it. And then folks come back who stop playing it because like everyone else is like, hey, trying to get back into it. I'm not putting you in that list, Anton, because I know like you never stopped playing Monster Hunter. I'm just saying those those who did stop and they started doing like, like an activity or like achievement type thing or just just a little tomfoolery. I love that in gaming. That's like one of like the cool, fun nuances of video games for me. Well, to be fair, I haven't played Monster Hunter World in actually a few years. So really? the original, the initial release of Monster Hunter World was January 2018. Oh wow! So, so you are part of who dropped off and came back right on. Yeah. So and I mean, it's just because it's a solid game. There's still stuff that I kind of like loose ends to tie up because it's just such a big game. So, oh yeah! Did you get, did you give it a season finale? Did you get Monster Hunter World little season finale for yourself? Like top oh, top all those bows. The season finale for Monster Hunter World for me is going to be beating Fatalis because that there are two fights that I haven't beat in Monster Hunter World: Alatrion and Fatalis. And so, Alatrion's it's just a matter of like having the group prepared to do it. And then Fatalis is truly, like, the final test, like, the final challenge of Monster Hunter World. Did you did you know that you can kill monsters by throwing them over a ledge in Monster Hunter World? Did you know about that? I mean, maybe there are cheeses, but... Oh, I'm looking at it. I'm, looking at, I'm, just, I'm just tagged you on Twitter. Like, yeah. It says uh, you can kill monsters by throwing them over the ledge in Monster Hunter World. That's wild. All right. This is something I'm talking about, like the little small nuances you see out there, like in the gaming world, like it's just always that small stuff that you never see coming, but people like put it out there and you get to see it. 
it, it's it's a little bit different than like say those those YouTube videos that give you all the Easter eggs about stuff you didn't know. It's it's always more fun like when you get like those little clips that just pop up out of nowhere just from like a quick little search. I love stuff like that. But we uh, for me personally, what I've been doing has been binging TV shows. If you guys heard my last episode where I talked about my personal life, I've been watching TV shows like a Jackrabbit. So I've been rewatching Avenue Five. If you haven't watched it, it's on HBO Max. It has Hugh Laurie. He's a star, and it's, uh, it's about <laughs> it's about a cruise ship in space. Uh, Josh Gad is also attached to it, and he is a bumbling imbecile who uh, is loaded, a full-on billionaire, and he creates this, <clears throat> this ship called Avenue Five, and they go out in space doing a cruise thing, and they get stranded in space, and it's absolutely hilarious. I I I I caught myself laughing so many times watching this show. If you haven't seen it, I think give it a shot. It only had two seasons, got canceled after the second season. And like it's not, it doesn't really have like a cliffhanger towards the second season. It just, you know, it just is. And I definitely, I, I highly recommend people check it out. But I also finished Archer, finished that. Mm. The entire like, it's they wrapped up a lot of bows with that show, man. Like I, I know a lot of folks fell off when uh, Archer went into a coma, and that whole thing happened. But I'm telling you, watch it. Like keep yeah. watching it. it I it gets, like, kept up with so it throughout the seasons uh, because it was just on Hulu. And mm-hmm. so, still is by the way. Yeah. So, and I mean, Archer's one of those shows. It's like Bob's Burgers or like yeah. Futurama. Futurama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like just one of those it shows. You just throw King of the Hill. You just throw it on and it just like let it. Rick and Morty, Solar Opposites. Yeah. Those are just yeah. like put them on in the background, and you know, every once in a while, you like walk past, and it'll be a joke. That like, <laughs> <laughs> that you heard a thousand times, but you still laugh at it. Right. Exactly. It's, it's one of the great jokes of all time. The uh, Simpsons is also joke. really great at that. Yeah, and uh, we've been rewatching The Simpsons. My kids and I, we uh, we were watching Simpsons maybe once or twice a year. We start like at season twenty one, mm-hmm. and just go from there. Uh, we don't go any further back than that. Going further back than that is kind of a fool's errand in my eyes. I got this rule with my kids also about TV shows. Never watch the first episode of any show. Never watch the first episode of any show. You're going to be disappointed because it's going to be nothing like the rest of the, rest of the episodes. I mean, Bleach. You got to watch the first episode of Bleach. And it you takes a while for Bleach to, like, get... Again? Like... For me, it get... took about 13 episodes. Well... For Bleach to like exceed the heights of the first episode, you gotta go kind of deep. Yeah, yeah, you do. And people, don't, people think I'm crazy when I say stuff like that. Like, what? Took you 13 episodes getting the Bleach? It was not that good. It's <laughs> like not at first. Oh no, Maybe that first was episode was awesome. And then, yeah, <laughs> like the first volume of the manga is great, but then. It takes a significant dip, but then by the mm-hmm. time Ichigo gets Bankai, like, you're... Like, that's why I'd oh. say if you watch, like, a recap of the original Bleach and then watch okay. the Thousand Year Blood War, which is on Hulu, because that's the animation's better. through the roof, the story's through the oh. roof, just... So oh, much better. But to be fair, Bleach had, like, at least 5,000 different animators on that damn show, like, depending on what season you're on. So, like, it's it's a drop in the hat. I got a little depressed watching. I started watching Bleach and watching it without, without the fillers. Had one of those maps, one mm-hmm. of those, like, those filler maps. Yep. And I got depressed watching that show. I had to stop watching it. It was just like, this is too much. Like, this is too much. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta stop watching it because I just, I feel sad watching it. Every time that theme song came on, I'm like, okay, we gotta, we gotta take a break from Bleach because I never finished it. I tried. I just couldn't do it. Hmm. Do you know about where in the story you left off? Like, um, they were fighting the hollow, the hollow generals. Oh and, yeah, uh, the uh, Arankar and mm-hmm. the Espada. Okay, so you made and, like, it. They had just, they just finished that, and they got back to Earth. They were doing like, like misadventures there, and like something else was about to happen. And like, I can't. Like, this is like I think it was like one episode, one eighty something. I was getting close to two hundred. This is around there. And I, I petered off. I just petered off. Like it's too much. But yeah, that's uh, that's what I got. You've been watching Jujutsu Kaisen? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm caught up. The season ended. Uh, I haven't... I'm a few weeks behind on reading the manga. But, yeah. This season of Jujutsu Kaisen is some of, like... That's hurt. The, yeah. yeah, like, some of the anyway. sequences is just, like, all-time greats. And if you hear, like, the rumors out there about, like, uh, is it is it... Is it MAPA? M P A A? Is that what it was? Yeah, M A A P A. M A A P A. That's what it was. And uh, they they talked about that. Like like they say the animation for these seasons is like forty five percent to like to their standard. Like they said it was supposed to be better than this. And I I said this before on a previous episode that it wasn't supposed to come out until this year. So like fans like were complaining and wanted to be rushed. This is what happens when you rush animes. You get like you get very poor quality. So. All well, I wouldn't call off. any of what we actually got poor quality. Poor quality, yeah. You know? Yeah, like yeah. it. Even when they go and they clean it up for the Blu-ray, but even watching it week to week, because that's the thing about like in the anime industry, the difference of like work-life balance and in the Japanese creative fields, like whether yeah. it be music, whether it be movies, whether it be like animation whether it's a different level to anything that we have in the west so agreed i won't ever deny that yeah and then like animation's hard animation is just one of the most difficult things like it never yeah. actually gets easier because it's always like a tedious like meticulous process to animate anything and i know agreed. i personally can't like I can't animate, so. I can draw. I can't animate. Yeah, I hear you. Right. I hear that. So you draw that still image, and then you got to draw it 60 times over to fill one second, and. I'm going, like, old school, like, flipping papers, like how they used to. Like, they use, they use digital now, but still, like, it's not easy to do all that stuff. It's still very difficult. Yeah. Right. Um, We got, like, a lot of stuff to talk about this episode. Had to catch up. We got to talk about, like, you know, all the cool stuff, all the anime stuff, all stuff that's been going on in our life week to week. But we've got Suicide Squad. That, the footage for that just dropped, like, recently. It's the Oof, last performance from... Yeah. It got, it... From, yeah, it's the last performance from Kevin Conroy. And, like, it's... Uh, it, it shows a different sphere of um, what they're trying to give to us, which is, like, actually fighting the Justice League, the Suicide Squad, what they're doing. And, like, it, it's prompting that, the story, more so than the gameplay from what I saw. I don't hear people talking about this very much, but they're prop they're they're really propping up the story mode of this more so than like the actual ga- gameplay of this. So I I see where they're going. I'm not sure if I like it, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm a... the IGN preview. So like Prescott to preview this game, and the IGN okay. preview was scathing to say the least. Mm. Yeah. Like and the screenshots that I've seen, like I didn't have a lot of hope for this game. But it's it's worse than I thought it was going to be. Like, because they spent a year polishing this. And, like, I don't know if you've seen the UI, but it is... Like, there are memes about, like, overly complicated UIs. And somehow the Suicide Squad UI is more complicated than even the memes that people make about overcomplicated UIs. Ouch. See, that's not good. I'm watching like the ten minute preview now while we're talk while we're we're talking about the game and um, no I I can't I can't like talk about like the mechanics of the controls and stuff like that but I'm looking at it now it looks crisp it looks good it does look it does look like Fortnite I'm not gonna deny that it does look like Fortnite but uh, it's smooth kind of not really it looks, it looks a little it looks a little janky from what I'm seeing right now but uh, it it is clear it's present. I, I don't know if I would... Um... <laughs> I know that this I'm one not... is a hard pass in the crowded <laughs> early 2024. That I mean, like... man. <laughs> uh, like, they, they postponed this. Like, those of us like who know like what happened, like, they, they had to postpone it to put it back because a lot of people were not happy about, like, the, the product of this. So... I don't, I don't know how this is going to fare, but, like, I know, like, they're putting a lot of eggs in their basket when it comes to this game. So, like, it's... I don't know. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see what happens, but like you just said, like it's a, it's a no, it's a no for you. It's it's going to be a no for me all. 
money out for this. Unless, like, I, I would have rented from, like, Redbox just to see what it was like. And, like, we don't really have any games, like, like this to compare it to. So, for, like, maybe Arkham Knights? And that did not do well at all. So, Well, this just... you could most closely associate to the Avengers because we're the okay. four-player online co-op superhero. So Crystal Dynamics Avengers, Makes which sense, yeah. performed horribly, like as far as critical uh, ar- reception. Argu- arguably. Arguably before horribly. Like there there are some people who 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 stand for that game, but like yeah, I, I hear Yeah, that. it had its audience, but if we look on like the critical end Right. It was poor, yeah. Yeah. You're right about that, man. I'm looking to try and grab the Metacritic for Marvel's Avengers. Sixty seven on Metacritic. Eesh. That's uh that's and like, I, that's I have a yeah. feeling that Suicide Squad's gonna do worse than that. Lower. Yeah, I think it'll be lower too. And now like there's gonna be a lot of fan service in this game. I'll tell you right now, like I, I saw like some of the trailers. Like it's gonna be a lot of if you know the DC universe, they're gonna be like catering to you. Like the fans who love DC Universe just love DC Universe, but like I'm telling you, the gameplay it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's there. It's like it's 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 attractive, yeah. But it just feels like a lot. And it feels like uh unless like you, you are into games like this, you may not enjoy it. And I am not a person who plays games like this. Like this is not my cup of tea. I don't even play Call of Duty. So playing something like this is definitely not my wheelhouse and I just it makes me wonder like who were they who were they trying to sell this to? Were they, were they trying to sell it to the Fortnite fans? Is that is that like the audience they were going for? No, you uh because the Fortnite audience is already like ingrained. Like Fortnite was breaking concurrent player counts during December. It had more yeah. players than like Roblox, Call of Duty, like some of the biggest hitters, uh FIFA, like all of the biggest games combined during December twenty twenty three. So I don't think targeting the Fortnite audience if that with what they were doing, that's not a viable strategy. I think it's targeting, like, you know, the people who enjoy playing co-op games, people who enjoy playing superhero games. Because, I mean, like, yeah. Spider-Man 2, one of the biggest games of last year, so... Which is, which is weird. Like, if we could take a pause just for a second, like, talking about this and talk about that for just just for one second. Like, that, that game did do good. I think, like, 22 million? I think it did? And... And, like, you don't hear a lot of people talking about that game as much as, like, you, you would think they would be. And, yeah, it was a, it was a busy year, 2023, of games. And, like, you know, it came out more towards, like, the tail end of the year than anything else. But I still don't hear a lot of people talking about Spider-Man 2. Like, do you, do you hear in your circles people talking about Spider-Man 2 at all? Well, I mean, the majority of people played it, beat it, platinumed it, put it down. Like, right. I don't have it installed on my PlayStation anymore because I played it. Beat it, platinumed it, deleted it off my console. Right. So, but like, that wasn't the case with like with the first Spider-Man, or like even even my Spider-Man one one point five with Miles Morales. Like, it wasn't it wasn't that case with that either. Like people people well, hate I, that up. Miles Morales, I didn't even platinum. I played it, put it down, picked it back up, beat it, and then deleted it, and haven't even thought about going back for the platinum on that one. That's interesting. And that that was the game I heard like the most hype. I was like like cutscenes everywhere. Everyone was like, "We're talking about it left and right." Well, I mean, it was and a it, good game. It was a really good, but it was short. It was like an right. expand alone. Like it wasn't. But I mean, yeah. As far as like in my circles, it seems like it's relatively the same experience as Spider Man. 2016 or 2018 whenever the ps4 game came out and yeah so that game people played it beat it platinumed it and for the most part put it down or deleted it there wasn't a whole like there was dlc that kind of kept it going post launch and then they did like a game of the year edition and they kind of kept it rolling but with this there's no plans for dlc 
And then Insomniac was hacked recently, and so we know their game plan to like 2038 or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And uh, Spider-Man came out uh, 2018, and Miles Morales came out 2020. Yep. Yeah. PS5 but, uh, yeah. launch title. What What would get you to play Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League? What, what would get you to play that game? Sponsorship from the publisher? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I felt <laughs> like I, I, I was going to put a simulation outside of the publisher asking you to play it. What would get you to do well, it? No, right not now? asking me, paying pay, me. Pay me. To... <laughs> God. Hilarious. I got to uh, get the right. game for free. <laughs> and then on top of that, I need some sort of financial compensation for my time. Give, okay. give us some dinars, man. Give us some, give us some cash money. I hear you. Uh, next over, we got rapper T Pain reveals he was banned from GTA RP by Rockstar Games uh, because of the was coming out. Now, I'm not too familiar with the hell GTA RP is, so you got to fool me in on that. Like, uh, this is like I, by Rockstar Games after working on GTA Six. So, and he went on TikTok talking about this about how he was fired from uh, he was let go from GTA RP because like they didn't want him to, like, to be a part of GTA. GTA 6, but also being a part of GTA RP, but like it seems like they, they, they did the very same thing that they asked him not to do on GTA 6 anyway. So yeah. like, like maybe you can explain this a little bit better than I could. So RP is role playing. There are these okay. servers in Grand Theft Auto 5 where people like a lot of big names, like celebrity names in the gaming industry were playing Grand Theft Auto like heavily modded and, no pixel, right? Yeah. Is what it's called? Well, that's one of the big ones. Uh, okay. That's the one he mentioned in the video. That's why I bring it up. Right. Yeah. And that is one of the ones that, like, there was a wait list. You had to have, like, certain amounts of followers and certain amounts of viewers on your Twitch stream. And you couldn't break character. And there were actual penalties. Like, if at okay. any point you broke character, whether you're streaming, whether you're doing whatever. So... Hmm. But then, so, judging by what I've seen, it's like, he was banned for doing RP, and then Rockstar has now gone and purchased a lot of the companies that were hosting RP servers, right. and it seems like they're going to build that into Grand Theft Auto 6 as part yeah. of the online because that's one of the things that kept that game going for a really long right. time was the people Stuff like role that. playing. Yeah. Right. Like, I wouldn't say just this. We talked about this in a previous episode, too. Like, it's not just stuff like this. It's stuff like people uh, racing a car. Stuff like people making kid videos where they, they talk about colors and shapes and different cars and stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of stuff with this engine that people use on, on YouTube to, to keep that kept GTA going strong. And... I guess this is just another one of those things that, that keeps it going that people find a way to monetize from. And now, I I am excited to see GTA 6. I'm excited like to possibly play it also. But uh, what what are your thoughts on GTA 6? I know we talked about it before, but like like still having like having it soak in your head, having the the trailer process, being a brand new year. What are your thoughts on GTA 6 and in the future thereof? Uh, I mean, I'm excited. It's going to be one of the best-selling games of all time when it comes out. It's going yeah. to continue to sell month after month after month after month after month after month mm -hmm. after month. It's just going to keep going. And, I mean, I'm excited to play it. Probably not beat it. Who knows? Because I still <laughs> haven't beat GTA Who does, Fox. right? <laughs> you got you to be like a hardcore guy Thank you. And like and, uh, to play these games and to beat it. Because... I know me personally. I don't. I don't beat GT. I just play it. I just. I just. All right. Know, you I get to a it. certain point in the story where you kind of like can be let loose on the city, and you get let loose on the city, and you. Like, go, let's go sandbox. Woo! <laughs> I know that all too well. GTA so that's, Five. That's, it's once you unlock uh, Trevor. That's it. That's when I stop. No kidding. That's, that's exactly like. Hey, this guy's too cringe, and I don't want to see any more of this story. I want to stop right here and just start doing random shit. Right. And that's what I did. I'm drinking beer. This is a beer episode. If I don't I, have any it, beer, and I'm not trying to drink this rum punch that I do have. Rum punch? 
Yeah. I remember last time I talked about beer on the show. We started singing Cycle Stick. Beer is God. Beer is God. Beer is God. You know, I think that I had that as a ringtone at some point. Yeah? Yeah. I think that was in the Metro PCS days. (laughs) Yeah? Yeah. That's the old days right there, man. All right. Was it a flip phone? No, I think it was just kind of like a flat, not like touchscreen. No, okay. free Android. Oh, free Android? Like a Nokia? Yeah. yeah. It was oh, a Nokia, like the, the but it's not the Nokia you're thinking of. Was it a sidekick? No. Definitely not a full a keyboard. You strike me as a sidekick kind of guy. You strike me as a guy who had a sidekick. I, when the sidekick was in vogue, I was in like... 11th grade and definitely didn't have money for a sidekick. <laughs> I get you, man. I get you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I met T-Pain. I didn't even get to talk with him, but like, you know, I met him at Dream, Dreamcack. Yeah. So this is like, that's why I picked this story. I didn't know his real name was uh, <clears throat> difficult for me to pronounce. It's, uh, his real name is Fahim Rashid Najim. That's his, that's his birth name. I uh, didn't know that. He goes by T-Pain. I need to find out the origin of T-Pain. I have no idea where that name came from. But yeah. Nappy Boy. Uh... So, like, mm-hmm. his Twitch Nappy stream. Games? Yeah, Nappy Boy Gaming is, like, that's a Twitch stream that I would, uh, like, actually tune into on a regular basis for a while. Really? Because he'd have, like, streams where he would just play music that was sent in to him. And uh, Radic would, like, submit music. And, like, we'd be in the Discord and in the chat, like, Trying to get him to play Radic songs, and there were a couple times <laughs> he cool. actually got played. So nice, that's cool. Okay. We had like notifications on. We're getting in there early. We're like, all right, it, it's Tuesday. It. We gotta get you on this list. So you guys, you guys made like a, a full on challenge. I like that. Yeah. That's cool. So like, uh, T Pain has heard Radic by tomorrow. nature. Yeah, right by nature. Make sure you check him out. Like his music's good. I'll put a name in it and tag it. So I got him in my notes. I'll I'll, I'll put him inside of it this time. But I've been I was hanging out with um not hanging out, but I've been talking with a lot. Talking a lot with uh with Corkless. He's one of the mentees of Radic and he did like the he does the intro for FTO Podcast. I, I love his yep. music. I absolutely love it. Uncanny cool. Imp, another like producer in that group was one of the first people to recognize me in public. Like, hey, are you Anton Six? I was like, <laughs> yes, I am. So that's a, that's a feeling, isn't it? Yeah, it's only like, happened like you? a total of like four times, but it's always dope when it happens. Always a cool feeling. I had like I had it twice. It happened to me twice. Once at uh, AWA. Outside of AWA, and once at, at DreamHack, someone recognized me. Like it was very interesting. And I am, I am now currently watching Nappy Boy Games, and they posted their DreamHack footage mm. from uh, from from Atlanta. This is uh, it's very cool. Like it's, it's watching this. Like it's it's You're this just is surreal. Catch the wild D on camera. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking. <laughs> you gotta go frame by frame. Up, oh, look. There's the side of my head. You see there it? it is, there it is. <laughs> I was wearing that red shirt. <laughs> oh man. It was a good time during hack. I can't wait to go next year. It's gonna be so much fun to go next year. Oh god, I can't wait. You you're coming with me, man. Yeah. Right there next to me, man. Like you gotta you gotta like like talk to lingo because I a lot of stuff they were talking to me. I didn't know what the most of that stuff was. But yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like I was I wasn't the best person to go to that convention. <laughs> just you gotta just tag like me that. in. You gotta Right? Anton, go do your thing, buddy. Go do your thing, because uh, you got you got this covered a lot better than I do. Uh, next next up, we got PlayStation gamers urge to claim free store credit. They're old. This is a personal one for you because you said like you got some credit and you got to get some games also. So like like what explain what this credit is and like why it's free and what you get from this credit. So what it is is there's this program, PlayStation Stars, where you okay. get it's like a rewards program as you buy things on PlayStation Store. They give you credit, uh, like they give you points that you can use to redeem for store credit. And so 
what PlayStation stars they actually for a few days because everybody's level was was supposed to reset on the first day of 2024 but they actually like migrated over people's account level and continued everybody whatever level you were at that memberships continued until January 1st 2025 okay and so in the process of them migrating that account level over if you bought something in that period like i bought a few songs on rock band nice. and i didn't get any playstation stars points for those so the what you essentially have to do is go check in on your playstation stars and right. then you'll start to see the points getting delivered to you so so they just, they just accumulate the more you play it sounds like well, the more games you buy, the more DLC you buy, and then there are certain challenges like where it's like, hey, the f- the free PlayStation Plus games are out this month. Play one of them, and we'll give you fifty cents worth of points. Okay. And so there are like different challenges like that, and there are digital collectibles that I'm hoping they bring back PlayStation Home in some capacity and i can display my digital <laughs> collectible you're not alone in that man i don't think that's gonna happen though you think like they're gonna bring back playstation home yeah why not they have a v they have multiple vr headsets yeah so why yeah, do. not do a metaverse that is playstation branded I, I keep i keep hearing people float that idea around i never hear like it actually like being in process to who happened though? But like, right. but like with, I, I love this home. It was it was a wild place to be for sure. But there are a lot of studios under PlayStation's first party banner that we don't know what they're working on. So it totally True. could be like hit, they hired Haven, and I know they're doing fair games. They could also be working on like a cloud based VR version of PlayStation Home. There are a lot of possibilities for that to come back especially with playstation stars giving you 3d digital collectibles that you can only see through the playstation app on your phone they have to find a way to at least let you display them on your profile on ps5 Ooh, excuse me it's the beer sorry folks it's the beer i promise you it's not me being gross <laughs> i i found uh one of the, the, the grading systems they have for this this uh the points here so one dollar equals 10 points right uh five hundred dollars equals five thousand points right and and you get a twenty dollar psn credit twenty dollar credit uh twelve hundred points is equal to five dollars on psn and yep. i think i think that's it yeah so I'm no, sitting wait, at like eighteen hundred points right now. So that, here's here's a kick for that. So seventy seventeen thousand five hundred points is equal to seventy dollars right. on the PSN. So like you got a lot accumulated so far. That's not, is that like is that a game essentially that you can get with all that or what? Well, eighteen hundred. The only thing I could redeem right now would be a five dollar credit, but okay. I could use that towards. I'm really thinking about getting Persona 3 Reload. Ooh. Like, that's kind of one that's coming up on the horizon, and they released, yeah. like, the opening video for it, and, man, it was, like... That was, that, it that's, went that's from, like, we I'm probably going to wait on it, you know, I'm not super <laughs> sure, to, like, man, they are doing all the right things. They are saying... <laughs> they are speaking my language with Persona they 3 They whispering Reload. your ear, Anton? That yeah, was going they on? they really... <laughs> But speaking I know whispering, it's gonna... Go ahead. Oh, I, I, I was just going to talk about, like, speaking of whispering in your ear, uh, there is a game that's coming out here uh, in a couple of days that I just saw you post on on your page that I know, like, you're really excited about. Like, it's going to be coming out really soon. Oh, seven weeks? I mean, come on. A little bit on. less than seven weeks? A little bit less than that, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, actually... It's thought about by a lot of people. Like, in, it's, it's Final Fantasy base. Yep. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, uh, February 29th, twenty twenty four. I love what I love what Anton posts stuff on his on his page. Like he posts stuff on his story. He doesn't go ham like I do. Like I it, most of you know, like I, I I post like a jackrabbit on my on my page. But Anton, he's very casual, very subtle about stuff he posts. And uh, <laughs> he he just posted a picture that says uh, 
a few more days and it'll be out. It's just not not too not too much longer. And it just it just Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth. Like I know like you've been talking about this oh, yeah. for six months. Six months like that I know of you've been talking about this, but I know like you've been anticipating this a lot longer than that. Is that gonna like be like a a takeover for you? Like a game to just like take over all your time? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I have it pre-ordered, the digital deluxe edition. Uh, <laughs> I'm completely ready to go. Uh, yeah, I've been watching pretty much all the preview footage, but they're about to get to the point that Square Enix kind of always gets, where they're going to start spoiling the game. Mm, yeah, like. We're getting into launch trailer territory with the game, okay. and the launch trailer you never watch until you beat the game. I, from Square Enix, it's the same with films. Like you never, you never watch the second or third trailer of a movie. You just don't. Like it'll, it'll ruin it. It'll ruin the movie for you. So like, like yeah. you just stick with the first one, or you do a teaser and you just go from there. Like yeah. honestly, like honestly, I had a rule for a while where I wouldn't even watch a trailer of anything. If I'm if I want to play it, why would I watch a trailer? I'm already gonna play it, so I don't need to watch it, anything. So I'm, I'm already already invested my money, already put my money into it, and I already like save time to get myself invested into this. I don't need a trailer. That's that's, that's just how I how I saw it. Now I'm a little bit older, and I'm like you know, I need that eye candy. I just, I just do. Well, yeah. So nice. we've still got a little while to go, but actually. The week before it comes out, I'm going to see... They're bringing Advent Children Complete to theaters for the first time for two nights. Yeah. And so, the 22nd, I'm going to... For anybody listening in the Atlanta area, if you want to get tickets now that I have my optimum seat reserved... Uh, I mean, it's the, it's the, if you want to go take a nap, by all means, go watch it, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> No, it'll be the dub version. Man. It's gonna, yeah, on, it's, it's definitely not. But it's not the best. It has some super hype moments. Like you're not gonna oh, take yeah. a nap when it's Cloud exactly. is omni slashing the Mega yeah. Flare coming from Bahamut. Like it's not. You say that. <laughs> I moved. I, I wouldn't say it was a store fest. I won't. I won't call it a store fest uh, completely. But like you know, I I when I first watched it, I drift off. Then the second oh, time no, I watched it, the first it, time I watched I it. <laughs> I was hype. It's probably so you walk it to completion. Thing. Oh, I have the special edition DVD. I have the Blu-ray of Advent Children Complete. Then I have the 4K Blu-ray of Advent Children Complete. And I have it uh, digitally, both the original and complete versions, on like my Movies Anywhere account. I've seen See? this movie... like. And then the dub is super quotable, so we're going to be in there, like, if you know about Dilly Dally Shilly Shally, you know about Dilly Dally Shilly Shally. Uh, your, your origin story about this film was a lot different than mine. I uh, I used to be a bit of a pirate back in the day, as most of you know, so uh, I, I, I yarged myself on this film, <laughs> so... <laughs> Me and uh, me and BitTorrent were like this back in the day, and uh, yeah, so that's all I gotta say about that. Like, if if you know what a BitTorrent is and Pirate Bay's, you know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. So yeah, I'm old, man. I was like, I'm old. I know stuff. I, I stuff. mean, yeah, <laughs> like I used to use uTorrent personally, and I have yeah? s- sailed the high seas and plundered some booty. <laughs> Yo ho! All right, <laughs> but I think every time I've watched Advent Children, it's been through legal means because, like, legitimately, I would see like the special edition DVD at Goodwill and yeah. buy it and give it to my friends who also love the movie. So, you know what? I, I want to start doing something like that myself. I wanna, I would, like, this is a whole side thing from like from talking about this. Like, this like this is talking about what you just said. I always wanted like, to buy discount DVDs and donate them to libraries. And, like, and buy, like, how you just went to the book nook and bought, like, some manga and, like, the actual novel. I want to start doing stuff like that and just, like, start donating them to libraries. I want to, I think, like, my, 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 my word of the year for 2024 is understanding. But um, in my current situation, I can enjoy. And I feel like I can start putting some joy out there into the world. And, like, I feel like that's a good way to start doing that. Just, like, you know, giving back to small communities and, Getting like you know, putting stuff out there into people like to, to enjoy themselves. Uh, my comic books were stolen a few years ago, about maybe ten years ago. They were in a storage unit. 
I was uh, I was moved out of my place because like they were they were kicking everybody out to re renovate the, the the apartment complex. So everyone had to move out. New ownership came in, and they said I could keep my stuff inside the storage unit that was there until like um, I came back and grabbed it. I came back to grab it. It was like a week and a half later, all gone. Like they way ray ransacked all of it. They took my comics, took my television, took my game console, and like that's when I stopped buying games. That's when I stopped getting all. That's when I, like my nerddom took a hit. Is when that happened, and uh, I thought buying comics for a long time. And luckily, luckily for me, I'm, I'm very like obsessive compulsive. I made Excels for my comics. Like I, I got like got them all written down and saved up. It just you know, <clears throat> I haven't had the urge to go out there and buy all those comic books again. But I do miss them, and I did I did download them on my on my tablet the pirate way. But you know, but still, like I I, <laughs> I told myself I already bought these. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rebirth myself my own means. So like I didn't feel bad about that. But yeah, that's that's a little story about my comic book life right there. But yeah, it's um don't don't get yourself don't let yourself get stolen. Like if you if you care about yourself, don't let don't let someone take it because it will it will hurt a lot. Anyways, <laughs> last story of the day. I thought you were gonna say something. Last story of the day, uh Sea <laughs> Sea of Stars. Is now available on the Switch. Anton tells me it's on all the consoles, but I'm talking about the Switch in particular because that's the only console I have right now. So Sea of Stars, Game of the Year winner, Sea of Stars, is now on the Nintendo Switch. And hey, I'm here for it. So well, it's, I won't... It released day and date. Uh, it was actually a summer game last year. Right. So... It's been around. Uh, that's why I was telling you earlier. It won Cheesy Controller Podcast Game of the Year. Did it really? Yeah. It, Indie? Yep. Uh, our right. top three were Sea of Stars, one, Spider-Man 2 came in second place, and then Final Fantasy 16 came in third place. Nice. I mean, like, that, that doesn't surprise me. I feel like you guys are biased with Final Fantasy Close. Well, you know, <coughs> Liza P what? was in the conversation. Baldur's was Gate that? was in the conversation. <laughs> I mean, if we went off my list, Final Fantasy 16 would have won overall, but Sea of Stars <laughs> ended up winning. So, so not that biased. Not that biased. <laughs> but it got me. Like I noticed when we were recording that episode, I it was on sale on PlayStation. So, since I don't have PlayStation Plus Premium. I'm only on the essential tier right now because I like it wasn't worth the extra money in my opinion. I get that. No, so, I feel that. But you have played it, right? Well, yeah, I have it now. Like What do you think? So I haven't played it enough to say mm, right. Yeah, I don't want to the 20 the 20 hour rule, right? I forgot about that. <laughs> the 20 hour rule. That's what got us. That's what got us doing a podcast again. Like I heard you talk about twenty. I'm like, what the? What the hell is a twenty hour rule, man? Like, like we gotta talk about that. And you know, like you you get so immersed within twenty hours of a game. Like you know, you know if you like it or not. I I personally can give it an hour if I if I like it or not. But you guys got the twenty hour rule, so well. Yeah. It, I think that was like with certain particular like Monster Hunter or Final Fantasy. Like these bigger, longer, like you're games. spending yeah. thousands of hours potentially. Like <laughs> twenty hours is a drop in the bucket for those games. But <laughs> um, we were talking about the manga that was on my story and Final right. Fantasy Type Zero. So this is actually a really interesting story. And bringing up twenty hours, it's twenty three hours on how long to beat. So I think I'm gonna play it for Final Fantasy February because I've had this game for a really long time because the original Fabula Nova Crystallis, which was a trilogy of Final Fantasy games that were supposed to come out. It was Final Enter the Fray, right? I'm looking at it right now. came out nine years ago. Wait, Type Zero? Yeah, Final type Fantasy Zero. Type Zero, Enter the Fray? No, just Type that Zero. Hmm. That was a PSP now. game that never came out in North America. I really? actually have a Japanese copy of the PSP game. It's the only PSP game that I own that has two UMDs in the box. Wow. It's a two-disc 
Like, and I mean, Final Fantasy is kind of notorious for being so big it needs big, to be on two yeah. discs. Like, Seven Rebirth is going to be on just two like, discs. Just like PSP, though. Like, you just don't, don't expect something like that. Like, I've never right. seen two discs for a PSP. This, in all my years of, like, owning a PSP, playing PSP games, it is the only time I've ever heard of a game having two UMDs. Wicked. It looks like that, looks like that Vincent game that came out a while back. Durza Cerberus. Yeah, because yeah, it, it has like a lot of shooter elements to it. But... Mm-hmm. Cutscenes are fucking crazy, though. Good God. Right, so that was supposed to be... Originally what that game was called was Final Fantasy Ajito 13. And then Final Fantasy Versus 13 is what eventually became Final Fantasy 15. So I played and beat Final Fantasy 15, and I feel like I owe it to myself to play through Final Fantasy Type-0. Because I remember I bought it close to the PS4 launch because it came with a demo for Final Fantasy XV. And so, I mean, you already have the manga. You might as well like go go full on in, man. Well, I mean, I have a physical copy and a digital copy for this game. So, you just haven't booted it up yet or what? Well, it doesn't hold up. So <laughs> I've tried it a couple times, but I feel like I'm really... Like, I've meant literally since high school to play this game, so... I will say though, again, the cutscenes are absolutely phenomenal. Good gosh. Jeez. All right. I mean, that's kind of, that's one of the staples of Final Fantasy as yeah, a indeed. series. Like, like amazing cutscenes. Cut Got those for did. days. <laughs> well, yeah, he had that manga, and you had a book too, didn't you? Yeah, uh... It's like Solve the Mystery After Dinner. It is a mystery novel entirely in Japanese. And I picked it up because like, I was in a used bookstore after trading in some manga and decided to, you know. He said he wants to blow the dust off his Duolingo and start like uh, dissecting this book. So <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to see it. I'm going to rely heavily on Google Translate and capture Translate? the image and like... Yeah. Because it's only like 200 pages, so like, you know, get it nice, you know, snapshot it, let it fully like process it, translate it, download hey, it. Shame you like you don't like ride the, the bus or the train to work, like you can like do it like that, that entire duration and just like have fun with it then. So like, you know, like put like your own personal time inside of it. I feel like that's, that's the beauty of like of a train ride or a bus ride to yeah. work. It's like to do stuff like that. You know what I mean? Or handheld gaming. Or that, yeah, absolutely. Or that, good gosh, yeah. I mean, I feel like like I would I would steal my kids' switch if I if I rode the bus and train to more places for sure. But that, that is all that I have, except for Anton is currently going to be going to this, this concert called Issues. It's yes. a, a local ATL band. They are more of a he said more of a post hardcore, yeah, kind of like... feel to him alternative kind of like but a little bit heavier but they also have kind of like they have a dj in the right. band so got, it, got, got some got some rap influence to it for sure yeah, yeah. Got like some hip-hop influence and stuff. this this is their uh their farewell tour they yeah. are playing in different places from what is that california to illinois and all, all the way back here to georgia yep they have two shows, and I will be there the final night, the final issue show. I've I've seen them so many because they formed in 2012, and I saw them on almost every tour. Every time they came to Atlanta, so I remember my 21st birthday was an issues concert at um, the Atlanta Civic Center on the same stage that I graduated high school on. So okay. Yeah, I can I can hear the post hardcore. It, they they definitely got like a got a lot of breakdowns inside of me. Listen to like a song called Hooligans for them right now. It's uh it definitely got like a lot a lot of breakdowns out of it. Very skater isk kind of music. Even like like the video has skaters inside of it, but it has that um that that My Chemical Romance singing inside of it. That sounds very angelic coming from a man. So definitely something to look into. Well, if you like like the good old singer... go down like metal. Hmm. So the singer and the screamer aren't in the band anymore due to different oh. controversies. And so Ooh. that's why they're having the farewell tour. Ooh. And 
you were like, oh, it's only a three piece. I was like, eh, at it's points five. it was five or six, depending on like. Ooh wee! So. <laughs> God, I miss, I miss being in a band. I do miss those days. I, I was telling, talking to myself about that a few days ago. Like, I, I miss performing. I really do. You should, Have you watched the anime Bochi the Rock? Yeah. I haven't watched it, but I've seen some clips. It was uh, one of the biggest anime of the beginning of last year. Because I was uh, doing my whole anime thing last, last year. Like That was one of the top anime that kept popping up. And the music. Oh, my God. The music in that anime is so good. Yeah, I started watching it the other night off of a recommendation, and I got, like, a couple episodes in. But, yeah, so far, like, so the, good. The and... is like, like, she comes off as autistic, right? Well, no, she's just introverted. Okay. Okay. All right. That's, that's, that's different. So, so it seems very interesting. Like, uh, you really, like, get, like, a connection towards that character and, like, the music that she plays. Whew. My goodness. Uh, if, yeah. Like, music alone, check it out. And I know Anton follows my my iTunes music, so like you, you see that like it's definitely already a part of like one of my my anime playlists out there. So definitely, if you if you want to be a part of these my anime on iTunes, make sure you check it out. I think it's also on Spotify too, so check it out there too. <laughs> but that's all I got for the show for today. Anything else you want to drop out there? Ah. Uh... I know that's a lot of stuff to be talked about. It is, like I said, it's the second week. We talked about Cat Williams on like the FTO podcast. Talked about Johnson Majors, and that is still going. That is still going. He is huh, still talking about it, doubling down, tripling down. You got like a uh, his uh, Coretta's daughter, Bernice King, talking about this. That she did a lot of stuff even before she married her father, and uh, and a lot of stuff after. Her father died. So, like, she was more than just holding him down. She was actually a pioneer and entrepreneur and uh, a, a philanthropist slash activist in her own right. And, whew, majors, man. Hey, at least no one's talking about the ridiculousness that got him fired there in the first place. So, I guess I guess it all worked out in the end. Win-win, <laughs> uh, <sighs> win, I guess? I don't know. Oof. Or this is all lose lose, Steve. This is all lose lose. He pissed off a lot of black people with that shit. A lot of people in general were like, like the black community was fucking heated about that nonsense. But you know, it'll, it'll pass. He doesn't care. He's just gonna go back to the gym, go back to working out, like hanging out with his girlfriend Megan Good, who you know, who is this Coretta? He's got that Coretta fetish, and you know, go back to movies. <laughs> He's probably had to work away from the bottom, work himself right back up. So, it's whatever. <laughs> it's funny it's a little funny like you know it's a little funny like yeah you, you do kind of forget like what got him in that situation in the first place and you know <clears throat> like it i i keep comparing it to like the whole johnny depp amber heard situation huh. i know some people give me crap for doing that but you know I, I just see it, typically man. like don't really tend to focus on celebrity because like I saw thing. people making memes about the hold me mm-hmm. down like Coretta before I even know knew that it was a Jonathan Major thing. So it just shows how like out of touch with the celebrity world I am. I got too many games to play, too many <laughs> anime to watch, too many manga to read. Speaking of games, there's one game out there that's coming out that I know like you probably. I'm not sure if you're gonna be like excited, yeah. excited for this game, but I, knew was, it, I do know it's gonna be on your radar. And like, even if you're not gonna play it, I know like one of your one of your folks at Cheesy Control is gonna be playing it. And the game I'm talking about is, of course, Tekken Eight. Oh yeah, Tekken Eight. Uh, it's on my short list, but like this spring, it's just packed. Like yeah. I'm kind of locking in pre-orders, like in priority order. So Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth is locked in. Persona Three Reloads probably gonna be next. But yeah, Tekken Eight. Like I know the rupees. Probably everybody on the Rusty Rupees podcast has the game pre-ordered and ready to go already. Like, it's... We are kind of in a fighting game's renaissance between Street Fighter VI, Tekken VIII, uh, Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising. Like, Skullgirls is getting its final character this year. Right. I heard about that. I heard about that at... The, at people were talking about it at DreamHack. That it, like, well, yeah. it was coming out there. Yeah. So... And I know that she's, I think, in playable alpha, so 
hopefully, you know, springtime she comes to the game and they announce, you know, maybe a sequel to Skullgirls, maybe another season of DLC. Is it you're, you're one of like the few people I heard talk about this game and like you actually talked about the game itself and not like the, the hyper sexualization of these characters like that. That was like irrelevant in your eyes talking about like it was all about like, like the mechanics of the game and like the lineage of the game itself. Like I, I appreciate that. Like you always hear about fans who who has characters like this inside the games talk about the founding of girls like in like the women inside these games. But like you just care about the fighting. Like you just love the fighting well, of the game. Yeah, it's just like a great mechanically sound rollback netcode, like diverse, interesting roster, deep mm -hmm. like combat mechanics. Like it's a competent fighter. It made it to main stage at Evo. And I've been a fan of it since the PS3. And sure, some of the character designs are what originally attracted me to the game. But, and helped me choose my mains. But that doesn't take away from, like, the, like, just fully fleshed out, like, suite of modes and, like, archetypes of characters. Like, you got grapplers, you got zoners, you got, you know pretty much like all the core fighting game mechanics that you would need to know for a 2d fighter you can learn through skull Girls. respect i respect that like and, like, and i i watched the game in action i've seen it played a few i saw it played at dream hack also like it, it's it is gorgeous like seriously the mechanics is smooth it, it's uh it looks like a mugen a little bit but like it doesn't look like a mugen sometimes also like it has like a lot of a lot of like like vers versatility to it it reminds me of bloody roar at times also like it's, it's a very it's like a, it's a very cool looking game it just it is like in <clears throat> i i did knock it in my head a little bit but like uh you're right like it's a cool looking game and i, and I get why you like it so much all right but uh i will say this is a final stuff this is all, this is all trending on on x on, on twitter people are talking about release the senator the schumacher cut the batman with val Kilmer, because they had the man bat inside of it did not know about this had no idea and they were talking about uh has been hotel now i saw a few creators go to this this um this premiere because keith david was there and keith david just had like a bit part inside this this whole thing it's uh it's about like this demon who's a daughter of the devil and she gets a hotel called the has been hotel and it's a musical and as i said keith david is a part of it and again, he's not like he's not like a real big part about the all the show. He just he just in it for maybe maybe two episodes, I believe. And I am here for anything Keith Davis attached to. But it's trending the most next to like next to this apolog apologize to Ariana trend right now. It's uh thirty thousand. This thing is trending. So it's gonna be on Prime. I think it's gonna be on Prime in like five days. Maybe six days. Six days. I need to get on Prime and like catch up on Invincible and watch Reacher, it. dude. Yeah, go watch Reacher. <laughs> Come on, man! Don't be like that. Reacher's good. I read those books. I don't even so know good. what Reacher is. Dude. My guy, you're killing me. Reacher, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Did you ever watch Blue Mountain State? You ever watch that show? Mm -mm. No. Watch that first. <laughs> okay. You like, you, like, you, like a, you like a good stoner show, like a like a like a um, 2010 stoner show, like like shows like that. I guess. 2010, I was, like, 16, so... God, Anton, stop it. Jeez, you're killing me, man. <laughs> Jeez. Anyways, if you like a good stoner TV show, make sure you check out Blue Mountain State. I talked about this on the show also. It has uh, Alan Richardson inside of it. He's uh, He plays Hawk in the Titans TV show. He's also Reacher, Jack Reacher in the show Reacher. And Jack like, he's a... Reacher. Yeah. The God. It's good. Don't, don't knock it till you watch. It's good. I'm telling you. I, I wouldn't steer you wrong with a TV show. When, when have I ever like, gave you a TV show recommendation that like was not cool? Never. Never happened. Never happened. I would never, I would never put my, my, my lips and my, my, myself into something that's not incredible. That would just be bad marketing. I would never in my life do that. And if I did, I would want to kick my ass. If they could. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> so be like, fight free. me, please. I mean, you're going to have to. Yeah. I'm a big guy, too. So, you know. 
Come at me, bro. Come at me. <laughs> also, Prince of Persia is out this week, too. Yep. And I downloaded the high demo. Price. I haven't gotten a chance to try it yet. I downloaded the Grand Blue Fantasy Relink demo and the Prince of Persia Lost Crown demo. And It's got a lot of praise right now. Like A lot yeah. of people are talking about like good things about it. I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's a full price release. That might be a pretty big barrier for me playing it, but you know, it plays like an indie game, but it's it's crisp like a like an A plus game. Like this looks really good. Like, well, it, yeah, it's a it's Metroidvania, a, it's a and it's right. published by Ubisoft, so it has the budget to like put into the visuals and so. Exactly. Metroidvania, good God, yeah, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Almost said something disgusting. Never mind. Metroidvania. Make sure you check it out. We're like first year Prince of Persia. It's out there. Good God. I don't even uh, want to know because like no, I... don't don't worry about it. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Those games, man. Like that, that was my keepsake as a kid, dude. Like that's Super that's what Metroid that's what and me, like... Castlevania yeah. Symphony of the Night. Oh yeah, like uh, one of my favorite one of my favorite games, like when I was younger, was uh, Valkyrie Profile. Like that was I I love that game. Valkyrie Profile is like is one of the games. That's a Square Enix game, also. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think it was Square Soft at the time. But yeah, definitely, definitely the game of games to play. And and that long along with Dragon Legend of Dragon, like uh, Dragoon Legend of Dragoon. That's what it's called. That, and that's more of an RPG. Not yeah, a, a I was about to say like. I'm trying to think of like older Metroidvanias, like, and I know it's weird because now Metroid Dread is out, and Metroid Dread is a Metroidvania, but it's just mm-hmm. like it's a Metroid, mm-hmm. so it's kind so of like it, it, it is the standard exactly. Yeah, right. I had like that was funny. Like I've been seeing people post these things on Facebook. That's uh, like uh, the TMMT for golf or the TMMT for for um. For nerds, or like the Save by the Bell for for hippies, the thing like that. And someone said, like, well, what about Save by the Bell? And I had to say to him, well, well, Save by the Bell is the standard. Everything else that came afterwards is a copy of Save by the Bell. So like, yeah, you get you get kind of lost when like when you play a game that's a like a Metroidvania, but like it is actually like the, the standard. But I, I get what you're saying. Like you get kind of lost in the sauce sometimes with that kind of that kind of mentality. Yeah, this and I mean, they're because Dead Cells was a Metroidvania, but then it crossed over with Castlevania, and so now it's like it's just Castlevania in Dead Cells. Mm-hmm. Which and is, isn't Hades kind of similar to? Well, Hades is more of a rogue. Like I wouldn't call it necessarily a Metroidvania. Okay, but. Yeah, Dead Cells is also a roguelike, but it's a roguelike Metroidvania. From his lips, your ears. There you go. I am D of FTR Nerd Talk. Where you want to find something about FTR Nerd Talk, make sure you look up anything you can possibly find at FTR Nerd Talk. I have personally been on my own personal page on Instagram because <laughs> my my joy has been sucked out of my soul. And I've been trying to reclaim it for myself. So there's that. Also, I've been putting out content more because I need to get out of my head. So there's that too. But uh, I have not been putting much on, on TikTok because TikTok is full on Gaza. That's what they're talking about is Gaza right now. Like like South South Africa is now bringing the U.S. to, to court because like all the other people have been posting on there. So, yeah, TikTok, TikTok is cool. Don't get me wrong, but like TikTok is is trying to prove a point right now, and China's letting them. So there, there's that. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> you get what I'm talking about, man. I've been hanging out on Twitter a little bit more also because that's where that's where all like, all like the jackasses are. But the jackasses can't say much right now because like all the people who are really pissed off are also on Twitter. So yeah, you know, I told myself I'm gonna keep on calling the X because I'm like you know trying to be a journalist or you know trying to be like you know reputable fuck that it's twitter and like when i when i make a post you know what it tells me when you don't make a post like post your tweet like tweet it it still says that so you know what screw that it's twitter anyways make sure you find me wherever you find f2 nerd talk that's what i was talking about in the first place i'm getting sidetracked it's a beer 
blame the beer for it. Anton, where, where can people find you? You can find me around the internet, cheesycontrollerpodcast.com. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Anton, the number six with two X's. Check out my carefully curated, low key, awesome stories. He brought it back full circle. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you for bringing it back. Well, yeah, I don't post often on Instagram. Probably in the last two years, I've posted twice. So, but my story, like my story, will get updated a few times every week. So. Yeah, I like your story. Like you, you, you take your time with your story. Like you really like pick what you want to put out there before you post it. Like I love that about your stories. Like he, 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 he posts his stuff on his stories, but like you know, he really like curates it well and like i i it's a I vibe it, to man. it yeah it is because like i told him like i completely forgot about the same game again because like no one's really talking about it but you know what anton's the guy who keeps his ear to the floor like hey no one's talking about final fantasy i got you buddy don't worry about it and i've been posting that shit everywhere so as soon as you posted it i put it around after you're dog so i appreciate that thank you <laughs> oh yeah i will always do my best to get some final fantasy and or Monster Hunter representation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anywhere Definitely. I can on the internet. Because we all, if you guys been watching the show, you guys know exactly how much Anton is deeply, deeply infatuated with Final Fantasy. I, I don't know if Square Enix is paying this guy or not. Because not he yet. talks about it like they... <laughs> not yet. He talks about it as if they are. Not yet. Not yet, he says. Someday. That's the goal. That's the main goal. Anton, thank you so much for being on the show again, man. Like, cause this is like this is our show. This is our baby. We help make this. This is episode forty-one. Good God, forty-one episodes. Whew, going we're, strong. We're getting there. Fifty-two is when it's one episode a week for an entire year. All right, no, I'll, I'll check on it virtually. <laughs> I'm in. Absolutely. Well, I still want to do the episodes with Tasha J and Justin. Yeah. Calling them out on the it. air. At me. And you, get, you guys know you where to find to me. You listen to Justin talk. Justin's a wacky guy, isn't he? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> but also, I got to get in the nitty gritty with some of the fellow gamers out there. Yeah. He's a big kaiju fan, too, so I feel like you guys are really, really hit it off and stuff like that. Like, I'm like, you're big and like, it's like the... The, the not so predominant Japanese culture and like he's really big into like the not so predominant Japanese culture all the way you guys to click when it comes to that for sure we call it we but prefer this... to be called otakus thank you very much Steve. oh oh right right that's right that's the next level off keep I keep your tears because bottom tier is weeb that's a bottom tier it's weeb. no it's we, weeb. weeb is anywhere from the bottom to the top the only people that are allowed to call me weebs or other weebs but I will call a weeb when I see a weeb. This As guy. a weeb, I know. <laughs> this guy here. Otaku is like, I heard that back in the G4 days. Otaku, yeah. Well, otaku yeah. is like what it's called in Japan if you're like into... Mm-hmm. It's the nerd. The nerdum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the first time I heard it was on G4, though. Like back when G4 first started, that's when I first heard the term otaku. I'm like, what the fuck is otaku? It's a nerd in Japan. Like that's what they call themselves, otaku. I I I can be a t- otaku, but I, I prefer not to call myself an otaku. I don't call myself a blur. If I'm being honest with you, I call myself just a sort of fucking nerd. Sometimes a geek, more of a nerd. Like I know the the, the hierarchy, the lingo, it's it's all convoluted. It's kind of irrelevant when you really think about it. But you know, it's to those who subscribe to it, it matters to them. So I I get you. I had to take a beer for my homies. Until next time, you guys take it easy and keep it cheesy. Hey guys, D here of FTL Nerd Talk. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, tell your friends about FTL Nerd Talk. Got a lot of different shows for all of you. Make sure you tune in every week for a brand new episode. Take it easy.